Hello, my name is Alex Carver. I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer with Peer Storage. Today I'm going to go ahead and cover a technical preview of VVols and Stretch Storage support. On the Flash Array, we provide Stretch Storage support in an active-active configuration with Active Cluster. The first thing we'll need to do is to create a new storage container. To do this, we're going to create a new pod on the Flash Array. Once the pod is created, we will then go ahead and create a protocol endpoint within this pod. The VASA provider will see, once a protocol endpoint is created and placed in an empty pod, that now this is a new storage container, which it will be able to advertise to the vSphere environment. Here I'm going to go ahead and create the protocol endpoint via the CLI. In the future, this will be able to be done via the GUI, CLI, or through a REST API call. Now that the protocol endpoint has been created in the pod, we need to connect the protocol endpoint to the given vSphere environment. Here I will connect it to the host group representing the ESXi cluster in my vSphere environment. Once that's connected, I'm going to go ahead and go to our vSphere plugin and register the storage providers for this array that I just created this new storage container in. This will register both CT0 and CT1 storage providers in this vCenter. We can confirm that by navigating to the vCenter, clicking on the Configure tab, and looking at the storage providers. And here we can see both CT0 and CT1 have been registered and are in active online st status. From this point, I want to create the new VVOL data store. After selecting to create a new VVOL data store, I can now see that there are two storage containers showing up there, both the default container and the container that I just created. In the bottom, I can see which storage array and storage provider is backing this storage container. I'll connect the VVOL data store to both of the ESXi hosts in this cluster. Now once this is done, I will be able to go to the data store tab and see that the new VVOL data store has been created and is active and online and connected to both of the ESXi hosts. From here, I can go ahead to the host and storage devices and see that the protocol endpoint is connected to the host and it currently has eight paths available to the protocol endpoint. As this is only connected to the one array, it has paths only to that one array. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new VM so that I can go ahead and simulate pushing workload to the array from this VM. I'm going to go ahead and place it on this new container that is local and only on the one array so far. Once the VM has been deployed and powered on, I will go ahead and start running a VD bench script that will be able to push some mixed reads and mixed writes to the array. And here you can see that when I created the new VM, all of its volumes were placed within the pod. They're no longer at the root level, but for each given storage container, they will be placed in there. Now that the VM is powered on, I can go ahead and access it via the console and run that script. And this script will go ahead and push some mixed reads and mixed writes to the array. And once it starts running, we can go back to the array view and see that indeed there are some reads and writes being pushed there. Now the other array doesn't have any reads or writes to it. The reason why I wanted to push some workload is so that we can have this storage container local and only on the one array, but now we're going to go ahead and stretch it by adding the other array to the pod. And now that the pod is stretched, the flash arrays are going to work to get this pod into a synced state where the data is the exact same on both arrays. This can take some time depending on how much data needs to be synchronized over. But once it's synchronized over, we will see some mirrored writes happening between both arrays. These are because the writes that are coming to the array that the hosts are connected to need to be mirrored over to the other array. We can also see in that pod that the protocol endpoint and the devices are there. Now we're going to go ahead and connect the protocol endpoint on this other array to the ESXi hosts, as this is in a uniform configuration. Once that is done, we're going to go ahead and do a rescan 
to make sure that it sees that its storage is automatically connected on this other array too, as the VASA provider will be automatically mirroring the binds between both arrays. As the, stretch, or as the storage container will now be in a stretched state, and the VVault data store will now be stretched. And so now when I go to the protocol endpoint and I look at it, there are now 16 paths. I have eight paths to each array. So in a total, we have 16 paths and I can see the different target IQNs for the arrays. And we can see during this time frame, the VM did not crash. In fact, its IO continued to run. And in the GUI, we can see that there indeed was some mirrored writes. And then once the rescan happens, we see some reads coming through here now. And in the other array, we can see that the read workload actually decreased once the reads were able to be spread out between both arrays, as we are in a uniform active active configuration. The little jump in mirrored writes there is the workload was actually changing within the script itself. Now that we have the storage container stretched and the VVault data store is now a stretched VVault data store, we're going to go ahead and clone the, another VM here to show that we can indeed create a VM when it was a local storage container and now that it is a stretched storage container as well. So this process will go ahead and clone the existing VM there. And then once it's cloned and deployed and powered on, I will be able to go ahead and push some additional workloads from it as well. Now I'll go ahead and open up the console to the VM and run that script for VDBench. And once this script is running, we're going to go, and go ahead and see a mixed workload of reads and writes going to both arrays, as the storage container and the all data store are still stretched. And here we can see the jump in both mirrored writes and with read workloads. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually crash one of the arrays, simulating a failure on that array, such as power going down to it, it crashing, or some other event where the two can't communicate. At this point now, there's going to be a race to the mediator for this pod so that we don't get into a split brain situation or any data corruption. Now the array that was still online and active wins the race to the mediator, and now the pod is online for that array. The other array is crashed and offline, and we see a short little pause in I.O. as the race to the mediator happens, and then the writes and reads start happening on only the one array, as the other array is not active or online. And we can see that the status is an on an offline state. But the I.O. continues to run, and the VMs didn't crash, they weren't restarted or rebooted, they had a slight pause in the I.O. going to it, and then they resumed the workload being pushed to it. We can see the VMs are still in a healthy state. The VVOL data store is still active and online and available. Then when we go and actually check the paths to the protocol endpoint via the host, we can see that half of the paths are offline or dead and half of the paths are active. This is expected as one of the arrays is unreachable from a storage perspective. And we can check both arrays and see the same information for that protocol endpoint. And now we'll go ahead and simulate bringing that other array back online and so that the pod and storage container and the stretch VVOL data store can now become in sync and stretch once again. So once that array comes back online, we will see that the pods start to become in a resync state, that any of the new writes that were happening while the other array was offline and the pods were not in sync need to be replicated over there and then put back into a sync state. Now this can take some time depending on how much New writes and new workloads were happening to be pushed while the pods were in an unsynced state and the arrays couldn't replicate together. But once they are in a synced state, we should see those paths actually come back online and in a healthy state when viewing the protocol endpoints information from the ESXi host.
and now it is an online state for both arrays, and we should see that paths just came active right there. And when we go ahead and look at the GUI for the arrays, we'll go ahead and see there's actually reads and write, mirrored writes happening to both arrays again. And we can see that the protocol endpoint has all 16 paths up and active for both ESXi hosts. Then we can look at the VMs. They continue to send uh, workloads and their reads and writes the entire time didn't crash. And we can actually see the workloads become into that good state there. So there's a little uptake in the mirrored writes, and then the reads continue to work. And that concludes the technical preview demo for stretch storage support with vVols. Both Pure Storage and VMware are extremely excited to be delivering the support to you in this design partnership between us. Thank you so much for watching.